I'm doing this video to keep my promise in the video I already recorded, which should be coming later in the Taiwan Special Series, that I would open the window during the monsoon. So, um, yay. There's all this excitement about the disaster in Taiwan and some farms in the lower areas or closer to the mountain have lost some stuff and some people who should have known to evacuate probably had trouble. I'm not going to judge, but you know, it's, it, this wasn't a shock. This wasn't out of the blue. The affected areas, they know what the water level is when it rains. They actually, on the road, they have painted the numbers gauging uh, where the water is because those are normal flood areas. Factories in those areas have these water doors that they that they install when they know they, they they like set them in place they've got rubber seals around them they like there's this little miniature levee around the factory because they know uh what happens when it rains like it's an island that's used to water the sewers are enormous uh you know so I, people they know how to deal with water here um, the, the problem is in lower level farmlands, you can't evacuate your farm. You can't, you know, so don't let the, the media get you all hysterical just because they want to sell stuff. But I talk about that in the video. So from Asia with love, usually the namespace is Asia W love or from Asia with love, but search from Asia with love. There's a logo on Jesse dot house. It's my projects in Jesse's little workshop house thing. And it's kind of looks like an uh, Asian farm hat, straw farm hat thing. And it's got, you know, the, a courier font from Asia with love and some cursive. And it's, it's, you'll, you'll see it. It's usually uh, black background, black or white, one way or the other. So follow those. You can see, you'll see pictures on Instagram and the, the YouTube account. I think there's some stuff on Facebook. But I've got the window open during the boring or boring monsoon. And... I wanted to say a few things about this Jacksonville shooting about gaming. See, I was here in Taiwan when League of Legends was becoming a thing. And League of Legends was a thing. It's an online video game if you live under a rock. And that was uh, popular in Taiwan before it was big, big in America. I, I mean, in my League of Legends account, I have the, the Taipei Assassin skins uh, for some of the, 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 the champions, the characters. And I mean, I, I got to level 30, the, the, you're finally in and paid your dues level in Taiwan playing completely in Chinese. I did it in five weeks. And then I had another uh, account, like a worthy account like that, uh, level 30 or whatever, back when 30 was the thing. I did that in America. So I had, I had two accounts like that. I was a terrible player, but I played with the, the Taiwanese and I saw their playing style and how it was different from the the Americans playing style. And that was actually part of where I learned a lot of the culture from. Like, like when they're losing, they don't know how to stop. And I think that goes back to the shame culture analysis, which I, I talk about later on. I'm getting, getting to in future episodes of, of the Taiwan special. So I would watch the kids go get addicted to video games. Before League of Legends, it was Facebook Tetris. And, and the parents wouldn't do anything. And one of the best kept secrets about parenting is that you have to stand behind the kids to make them do their homework. You, you can't just shake your fist like a liberal and demand that results find themselves. And likewise, you can't make like a, a, a Republican and complain about how you can't make a difference and it's hopeless to try. So you've got to actually go in and execute a plan and make it work. Now, the big lie with assumptive parenting, these are parents who operate on stupid instinct. There are no smart instincts. It's stupid instincts. And it, some instincts might be useful, but for the most part, instincts are, are born in ignorance. And instinctive uh, parenting would say, if I stand behind the kid, then aren't I enabling them to need my help? Uh, that's not going to come from an experienced, accomplished teacher who's dealt with many children. That's going to come from a first time ignoramus parent. Because don't we know that the teenagers are only mimicking the behavior of their parents when they were young children. Young parents are more arrogant than teenagers oftentimes. 
now that I'm a parent, I know. You know it's just like, oh, come, weren't you over that in, in junior high school? You wanted to, when I get to be 13, when I'm 14, when I'm 50, when I get to be a parent, grow up. It's when you get to be a grandparent, if ever. So don't let that assumption tell you what to do uh, in how to raise your kids. And why does this relate? Why, why does parenting relate to a video game shooting? Do I really need to say? I, now, you can have wonderful people that are parents, but this is a society-wide thing. Yes, you need to stand behind the children to make them do their homework, to make them practice piano. My mother used to ask me that. Do I have to stand behind you so you'll practice? Yes, you do. You can't expect a child to do their homework on their own until they know how to do their homework. So you stand behind them and you teleport your focusing mental energy into the back of their head and they'll sit there and they'll write while you're watching and, and they're, okay, now go back and do your work. And after a few years of that, eventually they'll be able to do stuff on their own, but they have to be able to do it before they can do it on their own, one bite at a time here. So the other thing is, you know, technology and in another video, I talk about game addiction, where there, there's this chemical rush that happens when you get a notification on your phone or when the teenager hears the phone ring. Oh, oh, I could have possibly, maybe I have friends after all, you know, like, and they ran for the phone and then mom and dad, uh, I wish I had that energy. Glad you can answer the phone. I hope it's not one of my friends. I don't want to talk now. You know, it, it, the, the kids get a chemical rush. And when you've got a phone and friends constantly bing, 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 that's like, ing, ing, ing. It's, it's like a shot of some drug every time the alarm goes off to young people and they get addicted to it. The same thing with games. You just got Each one of those is a chemical rush. So when people are addicted to the, to the phones, it's a chemical addiction. And Jordan Peterson talks about this, you know, uh, lobsters, when they fight in their lobster uh, clicking, uh, pinching order, uh, so to speak, you know, there's a chemical letdown that happens inside the lobster. This is from other people's research. And if you basically, as, as Peterson says, if you give the lobster antidepressants, he feels better and goes back and continues fighting. And so you've got a generation that's addicted, that's chemically addicted to the activities that happen with, with the video game and, and technology. And so this guy who's been playing enough, addicted enough, loses at, at the champion moment. He's got this chemical rush that overwhelms him and he can't handle it. So Part of the part of the problem is is don't buy the Republican style lie that you can't make a difference, and don't buy the Democrat style lie that we're just going to shake our fists and expect things to to magically line themselves up. The parents have to go in and intervene, stand behind the kid, and make sure he does something constructive, and unplug the computer and take it away. Look, son, you're you're in in college. If you're going to live at home, you're not going to play the video games all the time like that. That's that's the deal. Uh, you know, and, and there are ways, you don't do that with shock parenting, but y you can do it and enforce it. So one, you've got to make sure people are not playing with technology that much for eyesight reasons, but for also chemical addiction reasons. But second, do something constructive. Wah, wah, wah. This is the big lesson. The computer is a tool, not a toy. But young people are only going to know that it's a tool if they get taught. Here in Taiwan, I would go up to parents and beg them to let me teach their children Linux. And it's really funny. They'd argue with me because they were concerned that they wouldn't be able to learn computer programming. I'm like, Ugh. I mean, one time I argued with an engineering professor about his 13 year old who was all excited about Linux. And, and he was so concerned that his 13 year old learned C language before he learned how to CD space into uh, and copy files in Linux because he didn't want him to get messed up. What the heck? 
It's like they don't understand basics of learning. And I, I finally said to him, I said, I hope that your teaching ability as a professor is formidable and strong enough that you helping him understand the complex, difficult C language is not threatened by my simple little amateur curriculums showing someone how to copy files from one place to another. And he couldn't disagree at that point. Um, but because of the shame culture, which I talk about later, uh, I mean, of course he was never going to change. But I told him, and you better believe that baked his noodle. And, th and that's the thing, which I talk about later. We need people to tell us the truth so we don't think that our weird ideas are, are reality. And, and I think that was mission accomplished. Besides, I'm going to be putting my Linux teaching curriculum in videos and books soon. So that also won't, won't matter. So I've kind of stopped going around to, to kids in Taiwan. But I've, I've tried to explain to many, I mean, this is one reason Linux is my evangel. And, and I've, I'm going to have the ink verb video coming out in Jesse or in, in the, the, the Jesse steel.com, the book section, the books, the books page that I have. And you know, if people can learn Linux, Linux is a perfect way to teach anyone how a computer can be a tool instead of a toy. But if you don't, if you don't teach someone how to use it as a tool, they won't know that it's a tool. You have to teach them how. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of work. But if, if you're a parent who's too lazy to stand behind the kid and make him work and too lazy to, to get the kid down and say, okay, now, now look at this, see this, this is a tool. You do this, it's going to work. You know, like, like Helen Keller's teacher kept going after teaching her. Okay, I'm t showing you sign language in your hand to communicate. You got to keep pursuing until they understand it. And if you're too lazy to do that, then, then your kid's laziness, well, we know where they got it from. And if you're arrogant as a young parent because you think you know everything now that you spit out a baby, uh, then we know where the teenagers are going to get it from 10, 13 years later. So, you know, stay humble, but we've, you know, the kid, the young man did that very regrettable thing because he was playing video games instead of learning Linux. And while many other things could have, uh, given him something to do and many other things could have sh shown him how the computer is a tool instead of a toy. Linux is what I know as far as helping people understand how to use a computer as a tool. 